Arriesgate y sígueme el juego. Hi guys, welcome to my kitchen. I'm Victoria and I have teamed up with my dine to teach you how to make some amazing arepas. If you don't know what it is, arepas are a staple uh, food from Venezuela, which is where I come from. You can see the flag over here. And it is a very, very Caribbean uh, meal. And actually the word, it said that it comes from where I come from, Caracas, um, arepa, which is supposed to mean maize. So the main ingredient for this arepa, it's maize. So we're gonna be using this, um, this brand of uh, cornmeal um, flour. And this is the main ingredient for a lot of our dishes, especially for the arepa, and we're gonna show you how to use it. What you wanna do is that you want to take, so here's the, a new one, so I'll just put it on the side. So this is what we're gonna be using. I've never used it, I never used it with cups, but so you guys can understand how to do it. We're gonna be using cups. And what you need for the initial dough, so it consists on a dough, it's basically kinda of like a bread, that's made out of corn, and you're gonna be able to put fillings inside. So for the, for the dough, we're gonna need the flour, which is made out of corn, some salt over here, and we're gonna need some water. That's basically all you need to start. Super easy to do. So I'm gonna show you how to put it together. So we're gonna take one cup and we're gonna take some water. So you want to have the liquid first, so you can do the initial mixture, because you don't wanna have clumps in the, in the mix. So this is how we're gonna avoid it. So let's put one, oh, let me just open this. So we're just gonna put one cup of water, just there. And, oh, it's fell off. And then you're gonna take one cup of flour initially. Oh, sorry, before that, you wanna put the, the, the salt in, uh, because if you put it afterwards, which is what I was gonna make the mistake of doing, then it's not going to be, the mixture is not, not going to be homogenous. I think that's the word, homogenous. Yeah, I have a lovely Cleo behind the camera helping me with some of the words and things that I'm doing. I've never done a cooking um, show before, so here we go. Anyway, so what you want to do is that you want it, that it tastes like, for me, it feels like when you go to the beach, how the beach tastes. So not super, super salty, but salty enough because it's going to, the, the, the salt is going to be mixed with the flour, so you can keep the, the saltiness of it. So I'm just gonna put a bit of salt there. So you can put it to taste. You don't want it to be bland, but you know, depending on the feeling that you're gonna have, some people like it more bland, or some people like it more salty. I like it to be not super salty, just just the right the right amount. So you can taste a little bit of water. Hmm, perfect. That's it. So what you're gonna do now is that you are going to put, there you go, you put that, but very slowly. You have to understand that you're gonna start knitting the dough. So initially it's gonna be very liquidy, but as you knead it, it's gonna start taking that consistency of an actual dough. I'm gonna pour it like that and start mixing it with my hand. Yes, we're gonna use our hands a lot. This amount of flour should make it for at least three medium size arepas. You'll see why. So this is quite good that we finished. Um, I'm just gonna start knitting. So you can see that it's quite, um, it's still not the right consistency to do a arepa, but as you need it, it will start to dry out. So you just want to knit, knit for a bit. Uh, I've heard some people do it for 10 minutes. I don't want to do it for 10 minutes. I definitely don't have the time to do that. And I love, what I love about this dish is that it's really quick to make. And that actually looks pretty good. Depending on where you live, um, it might be that you're going to be need a bit more water or that you're going to need a bit more um, flour. However, I would recommend you never, well, like unless strictly necessary, which means that if you just poured a load of water accidentally afterwards, and then you want to try to fix it, never use the the, put the, the flour. It's better for you to keep kneading and maybe let it rest for a while for the water to dry out, because otherwise you can get lumps, and it's terrible to have the lumps inside there. Above. Okay. So I'm just gonna show you the consistency now. So it's not 
If you can see it, it's um, you can play with it. It's kind of like Play-Doh. Um, and you can see that so I have some of dough in my hands, but um, it's not actually leaving residue in my hands. So that's pretty good. So I think we can actually use this. We prepared a batch beforehand um, as well that we let rest, but uh, I think actually we can use this one. So I'm just gonna show you how to do it. So what you wanna do, now that you've kneaded it, and it's in the right consistency, you are going to take a little bowl. Okay. So you wanna take a bowl, just gonna, you wanna take a bowl, kind of like that. So I like to make it so, maybe like a little bit more. I like to make it so it fills my hand, so I can, the idea is that I can actually close my hands, and it kind of like fits perfectly. So we're doing medium size. Depending on where you're from, some people like it more flat, some people like it um, like thicker, some people just like it very, very large. I like it medium, medium size. So let me just start from the process again. So when you get the dough, ooh, that's low. so you get the dough and then you make a ball and there's like the arepa technique. So you make a ball and then you start doing this. Like, there's even like we have back when we have like advertisements of women that make arepas doing that. But then you can just, you know, you start making like round, 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 and then do that. So you want the corners and the, any, any crack that you might find to be very smooth. So what you're gonna do, so you're gonna take a bit of water. I'll show you this really cool technique. So I'm just gonna put some water here. And then what you do is that, let's say, you see this crack, so you're just gonna smooth them out with water. And that's it, that's your first arepa. I'll make it like all pretty and smooth. So yeah, it looks like a little, little bread that fits in your hand. So once this is done, we're gonna go straight into the to the to the frying pan. Go on. So I want you to see guys how smooth this is. Very, very Nice and no cracks, and that's very important for the final product to be um, as perfect as possible. We're gonna be using this oil. That's uh, it says one cal oh, one cal oil. Um, so we're just gonna spray a little bit because you don't want to be fried, and it should be medium heat because you don't want them to burn. It's gonna take a bit to be cooked. So you're gonna put them on one side. Let's put them all. There you go. So if you do them, the important thing about this is that if you're too eager to have them ready and you put them in high temperature, they're gonna burn and they get this cover, this, this black chart covered and it's not that nice. I quite like it if it's a little bit burnt, but if you get too excited, it will get very burnt. And you want it to cook the, all, the whole way. So you're gonna have it medium, medium temperature and in about five minutes, we're gonna flip them and you can see how they're looking. So it's been roughly five minutes and you want to keep checking so you can actually start turning them around. And if you can see here, it's not burned, it has a bit of a, of a shape and that's pretty good, solid. And it's not going to stick to your pan because we made sure that our, um, our dough was um, all pretty and elastic. So here you go. And that's it. So now we're just going to do the other side and wait for a little bit. While we're waiting for that apples to be finished and ready to eat, I'm gonna show you some of the things that we can put inside. So we have some butter if you want. If you're feeling more healthy, don't use the butter. I quite like the butter, but you know, you can choose to put it or not. You can do whatever you want with this dish basically, but we're gonna be using some, there's some halloumi cheese. Originally we use a salty fresh cheese, so this is the closest uh, I've found um, that works in Europe. We have some cheddar cheese, which is really good. We'll put some avocados. We have this amazing string meat. So I just wanted to show how juicy and delicious that looks. And um, we have it in different parts, in different islands. So some countries call it uh, ropa vieja. We call it carne mechada. We're not gonna teach you how to do this one because it takes a long time. It's really delicious and you should get it from my dining. So, you know, expect this. And what I'm gonna be trying, showing you how to do is how to do fried plantain, which we will combine with the delicious string meat that we have here. 
it's super simple. You find a plantain, they come in different shapes and sizes and colors. So it has some, it's not like a banana. So if it has this black bits, that's actually pretty good. If it's too yellow, it'll be too hard and this actually uh, becomes sweeter. So what we're gonna do is that real quick, we're just gonna cut the chop the, foot, the top boop, and the bottom. And we're gonna make a line here, like that. And hopefully it's gonna work on camera, but yeah, there you go. So what you do is that you basically undress the banana. And that's your banana being undressed. Your banana, sorry, your plantain. I just call it banana, which is basically a sin. This is a plantain, it's not a banana. Um, and what you wanna do, you can have it in different shapes, but I quite like this shape, so it's very angular and it's very, very tasty. Uh, unlike the banana, I would not recommend this to eat it raw, but you can try it a little bit. If you eat too much, you're gonna get tummy ache. But this is the shape that you're looking for. So we're just gonna make a few, which we're gonna take to deep fry. Oh, so you can see this is more or less the thickness that we're looking for. That's the thickness. And this is the shape. We're just gonna cut the whole planting. Don't call it banana because if you call it banana, I'm gonna get really pissed off. Like I am very pissed off at myself because I just call it banana. But yeah, really, really good. I'm just gonna finish in this. And we use this for a lot of a lot of dishes. take it uh, and we're gonna fry it. So we heat up the oil, it's gonna be deep fried and a little trick is that you wanna throw one first and see how it reacts. So that's really good. So we're just gonna put all of them down. Very careful that you don't get burned. So now that we're done, to make sure they're done, we just do that, that's a drum technique. And if it sounds hollow like a drum, it's ready. So what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna cut them, but we're not gonna cut the whole way through. We're gonna cut them, leaving a little space here so it becomes a little pocket. So we're just gonna cut. Gonna show you how I'm cutting without cutting myself. So we kinda like, this is what's inside, so it's quite soft, which is what you're looking for. You're looking for crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. Um, just get rid of some of that dough. And then, like a little pocket. So I'll show you, I'll show you how it looks. Okay, that steam. So it's this little pocket, and then you start putting things. So we're gonna, we're gonna do my favorite, which is this delicious string meat. Oh my God, look at that. So good. So put that there. So put that there, and we're gonna, put some, um, some of these delicious plantains. And that's it. And that's it, you got it ready? So I'll show you guys, I'll make it a bit closer so you can take a look at the arepa. And this on the side are tostones, but we're not gonna show you that today. They're also made out of plantain. And there you go. Thank you guys for being here and check out my dine. They're doing all this amazing Caribbean, uh, delicious, delicious food. And so you'll find some of these recipes there. Hasta la próxima. Till next time. Bye.